Hi, I'm Catherine Gladwin, and as you may already know, I've been a virtual assistant since late 2015. And in 2018, I wrote the now number one bestseller, How to Be a Virtual Assistant. And I've also been mentoring VAs, aspiring, new and established since 2018 too. So in this video, I want to share with you a few mistakes that I made early on in the hope that you don't make them, just to save you a bit of stress. So when you're first starting out, obviously you want those clients, you want the money to start coming in. So it's very natural to think that you've got to say yes to everything that comes your way, but it really is best not to. You may get somebody that approaches you and wants you, wants you to do something that you're not very confident, some sort of service that perhaps you've dabbled in or you think that you could probably learn on YouTube or just a quick Google and it really, it's going to end up too stressful for you. You should only ever do services or offer services that you're confident and competent in because it causes you too much stress and it will take you twice as long, if not longer, than somebody that can do the task. And that in turn then ends up costing the client much more money. And that's not good for your reputation and they probably won't work with you again either. So don't feel that you've got to say yes to everything just because somebody's asking. There have been so many occasions where I've been asked to do something I can't do and I'll say no. And they'll be like, OK, well, could you do this instead? And it's something that I can do. Or sometimes on occasion, they're like, well, I, it's OK, but I really want to work with you. I like your ethics. I like the way you come across. So I'm happy for you to learn on my time. Or they're happy for you to learn in your own time and then do the task. So saying no isn't, isn't always a negative. I know that you want clients. I know that you want to start bringing money into your business. And it is tempting to say yes to any inquiry that comes in. Anybody that wants to work with you, you want to jump at the chance just so that you can get closer to leaving employment or to bring that extra money into your business, into your home. But it is a big no, I'm afraid. You will sometimes get clients that come to you and say, could you do this for me? And it's something that's not on your list of services. It's something you've never done before and something you're not confident in doing. So you're going to have to say no. There's nothing that you can quickly learn on YouTube or a quick Google or anything like that. Leave it to somebody that can do it, because if you try and do it, it's likely it's going to take you at least twice as long, which will mean it will cost the client twice as much and it will stress you out. You'll get imposter syndrome. You'll not enjoy it. And you'll think now nah, this virtual assistant thing isn't for me, but it is for you. Just stick to services that you're confident and competent in. Another thing that you will come against or come up against sometimes is that somebody may come to you and say, OK, I want you to do this. And I see that you're charging £30 an hour, but um, I can only afford 20 And you might think, mm, it's not too much less. And it's, it's a lot more than I'm getting pay, paid as an employee. So I'll say yes. No, because there are so many people out there that will pay the 25 30 or £35 an hour, whatever you're charging. So you don't need to take those lower paid clients. If they can't afford you, that's not your problem. They need to start charging more for the services that they're selling. Or perhaps they just they're not ready for a virtual assistant if they can't afford one. It's not your problem. So you can say to them, no, my hourly rate is 30. Keep the silence there and see if they say, OK, yeah, I'll pay 30. Or you just say, OK, well, it's not for me at the moment. I don't charge £20 an hour. I charge 30, but you're welcome to come back to me at any time. Again, it is not your problem if they can't afford you. And if you start working for people at a lower rate, it means when those potential clients come to you that can afford your full rate, you can't take them on because you're working for Barry that wants to pay 20 quid an hour. So you don't have to say yes to everything that comes your way. And sometimes as well, your gut will tell you, mm, this don't feel right. Always go with your gut. It's always right. Always. My top tip, and this is based on experience, when I first started out, I quoted somebody something like eight hours to do some copy typing. And it ended up taking me, I think it was about 18 hours plus to do it. So I lost a lot of money from that. That's my own fault. I, I quoted it wrong. And we all make those mistakes in the beginning. We're not sure how long something's going to take. So my tip to avoid this happening to you is to, if you don't know the price straight away when you're talking to a potential client, say to them, I'm going to have to work out what the price is. So I'll get back to you after our call. I'll send you an email straight away. And then you can go away and think about it. You can ask your whatever community you're in. Maybe you've got a mentor or something like that that you can talk to. Work it out. Send the potential client an email and say, I've had time to think. To do this, that and the other, it's going to cost X amount. 
it's also a good way to just get everything in writing because if you've had a call with somebody or it's on a Zoom call and it's not recorded, there's no comeback. You, you can't go back and refer to it. So if you've sent it in an email, it's all listed, all the services that you're going to provide and the price. So it's, it's all in writing. It can all get agreed that way. And it's also the best way to ensure that you don't underprice yourself. Because if, if you're on a call, there's this tendency to like uh, panic and you could just like say, uh, just, just send me some Kit Kats. It'd be fine. <laughs> well, that's not a bad idea, actually. Don't be afraid to set your boundaries. So in my VA starter guide, I encourage you to look at boundaries. These evolve over the, the time of your business. So don't worry if you can like only think of one at the moment. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. They will evolve. But if you've got boundaries, stick to them. Because if you let somebody cross those boundaries once, what you're actually saying to them is, it's fine, do it again and again and again. So your boundaries might be that you don't want to be contacted by WhatsApp. Um, or you don't want to be contacted out of hours or it could be anything. You don't want people to phone you without booking an appointment first. So there are a couple of my boundaries. And if somebody I'll use the one where phoning me, I did have a client once. And if she's watching this, she'll know exactly who she is. Alexa um, used to try and phone me at any time for a quick chat. No, I'm not doing it, Alexa. I'm not. So stick to your boundaries and don't don't be afraid if you've got a potential client call and they're like, OK, so I need you to be available from 8.30 till 10.30 every Wednesday morning. And you're like, well, I wanted Wednesday mornings off because there's Pilates down at the town hall. So you can just say, oh, I'm afraid I'm not available during those hours, um, but I'm usually back in the office at half 11 and I can be available from then. It's your business, your rules. So again, don't feel that you've got to break your rules or break your boundaries just for somebody else. You are their equal. You're not an employee. You're working with them. So stick to them. Picking up on that you're an equal to them and you're working with them, not for them. If somebody tries to talk to you in a derogatory manner or as if they're your boss, I had that quite early on with a lady. I'm not going to name her name. Um, and, and I accepted it. And as you've probably come across, if you've come across me in different videos, you've, you've, you've seen me on TikTok or on LinkedIn, you'll know that I'm, I'm very strong, I'm very tenacious, I'm quite blunt. But I accepted it because I thought I, I need this client, I need this money, I, I want to leave my full time job. Now I would not accept it. And eventually I did get rid of her because of the way she spoke to me. It made me feel rubbish. Every time I saw her name pop up on my email account, I would be like, oh, my and it would just make me feel sick, angry. And I really, I didn't like it. And that's not how you want to feel in your business. You, you may feel like that in employment. So you certainly don't want to feel like that in your business. So if you've got somebody that talks to you in a manner that, that's not acceptable for you, don't be afraid to address it. I'm, I don't think twice anymore. Sometimes, I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a better position because I can get rid of people, but there have been a couple of occasions where I've said to clients, I don't think we're going to work well together. So maybe it's time for you to find another virtual assistant. It, it, if I was early on in my business, I would just say, I don't appreciate being spoken to like that. So can we go back to us being equals? It's absolutely fine. You are on the same level as them. You're working with them and not for them. They're not your manager and... Even if they were, they've got no right to speak to you in a derogatory tone. So don't be afraid to pick them up on it if it's not acceptable. Big thing here, and if you've followed me for a while, you know I'm a champion of us all, charging what we're worth, getting what we're worth, and saying to those that want a discount. So it's absolutely no discounts at all, not even for mates. Because if you do a discount, all it benefits is them. It doesn't benefit you at all. If you're reducing your hourly rate for people, you've got to work more hours to make that money up. So it's a no on discounts. And the best way to deal with that, if somebody says any discount makes rates, no. And sometimes I'll follow it up with no, no discounts because I want everybody to get the same great service. So it's implying that if they do get a discount, they'll get less of a service. They soon work it out then. You may also sometimes get people come to you and ask for um, a skill swap. Nah, it's never the same level because you you are always going to put in the, the right amount of work and it just never works out at the same return on investment. So no skill swaps and you will. This this seems like a cliche, but it does actually happen. You will laugh your socks off when you first get this offer 
Some people will say to you, could you do it for free and I'll tell all my following on social media? In other words, they're offering you free work, <laughs> whoopie do, in exchange for exposure. Mm -mm. Exposure does not pay the bills. Exposure does not buy you chocolate. It's an absolute no. And often these people that offer you, offer you free work, way in exchange for um, telling their social media following all about you you go on their social media and they've got two two members following them and one's got the same surname so it's their mum absolute no Cheeky going back a little bit to saying no to things that you can't do because it's fine to say that there may be occasions where you've got a client and they come to you and they've been working with you for a while and they come to you and they say just thinking, I've got this that needs doing as well. Are you able to do it? And you'll think to yourself, I've never done that before. But if I say no, I might lose them as a client. So I'm going to have to say yes. Mm -mm, it's a no again. If you can't do it, be honest and say, I've never done that before. So I'd rather not, if that's OK, because I don't want to let you down. I've said no to clients so many times when, when they're already a client because I can't do something they're absolutely fine about it. They'll be like, OK, well, I just just thought I'd ask. I'm fine doing it myself, but I just thought, you know, if you can do it, then that's great. You're not going to lose them as a client. I've never lost a client, an existing client, because I've said, no, I can't do that. They, they thoroughly appreciate it. As somebody that takes on freelancers myself, I would be absolutely livid if somebody took on something that they can't do. In fact, I've had it. And I would never, ever recommend that person. I'd never work with them again. I lost all, they lost all credit as far as I was concerned. So don't be afraid to say no, honestly. Now, there's other things you will come across in your business and there will be mistakes that you make. It's absolutely normal and natural. Just learn from them. Don't beat yourself up. Something that affects you will will seem less in two weeks so don't let it control you don't don't regret anything you've done you did it for a reason in that moment so just crack on with your business one mistake is not going to ruin you promise